we are all aware of contemporary challenges so i will not uh, delve uh, into it in great detail but let me talk and begin with the concept of gandhian spirit or the spirit why is the spirit important to communicate i mean if we look at it you know that what is it that connects us together in this hall you know each of us what is my relationship with you what is your relationship with me i mean if we can understand this basic nut what is our relationship with each other our relationship with each other is that we are human beings we are human beings we have i mean we have an evolutionary relationship we have a biological relationship but beyond that when we come to our ethics you know, what do our ethics tell us of this relationship and especially in the context of gandhi because you see if we are not aware of what is inside us how will we communicate with the other person who is also of a similar metal and material and how will we integrate ourselves into the environment which is of course compatible with a certain attitude it's very important to understand these issues for a communicator for a mass media person i am not talking about technological determinism you know because there are limits you know that this camera would be here now tomorrow probably there would be another type of a camera or there would be no camera there would be another another means of doing all this thing so we are not talking about technological determinism what we are talking about is spiritual determinism because you see it is these are the carriers but what are they carrying marshall mcluhan said that media is the message how is the medium a message and in the context of human race in the context of our social order what is the message and what is the medium medium keep changing as as technology evolves you know but the message remains the same because ultimately the medium is also the same what is the medium the basic medium is the human being or the being itself the two levels to it especially when we are talking about gandhi and spirit and when we are talking about commitment to mass media if we understand these three concepts it will be extremely important for us i mean as as we go into our phd's or as we complete our masters or as we go into life career options you know extremely important for us to be in command of ourselves so what is the question of being you know ourselves as human beings we are the ultimate medium and the message if you take this into your mind you would come to realize that you know when you are talking to someone you are using a gesture you are using a facial expression and you are using your dialogues and conversation you are using the medium of yourself to communicate with another medium that is also the other self and so the message first becomes what how you look at the person how you smile at the person how you in inside how you thinking about the person how you are responding by touch or by your other gestures then so this medium the two mediums are communicating and are imparting the message and what is the message the message will be of course something that we share with one another what is it that we want to share with one another the whole concept of civilization the whole concept of communication emerged out of the need basic need of a child crying for food for mother i mean the cry of a child is one of the communicating tactics you know and there is a response to it you see what are our essential needs you know if we drown our essential needs over acquired needs you know we tend to lose our balance as mass media persons are we going to 
मैसेज और आर वी गोइंग टू कम्युनिकेट मैसेजेस विच आर एक्सट्रेनियस टू आर बेसिक इंटरेस्ट मुच इज आर बेसिक इंटरेस्ट इज आई सेट इट इज द स्पिरिट इट इज दवेकनिंग और द लैक ऑफ अवेकनिंग इन योर स्पिरिट If you are an awakened spirit, you will be aware of the needs, the basic needs that you have, the basic needs of a society, the basic needs of which Gandhi ji so importantly felt. He said, "The earth has enough for everybody's need, but not for our greed." He said that you know, be the change that you want to see. Now this is, of course, he was being a communicator. But he was also being an awakened soul, you know. also being an awakened being. You know. He knew the importance of to be. I mean, when we think about ourselves, our goodness, our best interest, they are guided by what our spirit needs. You know. But we have stopped listening to it because we have stopped treating ourselves as the most important medium of communication, and we have lost the message. As mass media expert or aspiring expert, you will have to go back to your true self. And when you go back to your true self, you will have to discover its basic needs. Its basic needs, you know, yes, they were discovered by spiritual people. They were discovered by Buddha. I mean, he discovered it in his own way. They were discovered earlier by Krishna. Lord Krishna, Lord Rama. They were discovered by Lord Jesus. They were discovered by Muhammad. Peace be upon him. They were discovered by so many saints, Kabi, Guru Nanak, Mahatma Gandhi. And they then, you know, realized that you know what is the most important. And they were the best of the communicators. And their message was the best of the messages. Because, and what did that message say? What does that message mean today to us? Because as I said, that you know, when we go back, we are here together. The earth is Vasudev Kutam Kam. It is a family. It is one. Ahlu Lalla. It is the family of Allah. And some so much Jyotir Damaya. Allah who Nuru Samavati Walad. What Guru Nanak preserved in the Guru Bani Baba Farid's message. अवल अल्लाह नूर पाया कुदरत के सब बंदे एक नूर से सब जग उपजा कौन भला कौन मंद तो ये पॉइंट नो दिस बेसिक नीड्स विच यूनाइटेड विच इज आवर बेसिक कॉल द फर्स्ट पोर्ट ऑफ कॉल इज टू रियलाइज हु यू आर एंड व्हाट अदर बीइंग इज वी आर ऑल पार्ट ऑफ वन बीइंग दैट इज वाई सेट आई हैव अ रिलेशनशिप विद ऑल ऑफ यू and you have a relationship with all each other if you would realize that relationship you would find the best of interest for yourself and the best of interest for the other person who is around you and then you become the best of the communicator then you become masters of communication then you become masters of zen what is zen Which is our message, you know. Then now we've heard is that from Japan, the Zen is there, Zen is there, but Zen is what? It is Dhyana. What was the Dhyana? That is gone down into the linguistic translation, translation from Zen. So there was a master of Zen, you know, who was samurai. Samurai is a, a warlord. A warlord said that you know I want to learn some wisdom, so he went to a master of Zen. Who was sitting in meditation in Dhyana, and he said that you know, Lord, tell me what is heaven. And so the master did not reply. He kept his eyes closed. Then he asked again. Then he asked again. And then the samurai got very angry. And then he pulled out his sword. Said, "You are wasting my time." And he gently just the face opened his eyes. And he said, "This is hell." And he immediately bowed before him in submission. And then he said, "This is heaven." You see, Jana, then, and our relationship with one another, our same message going across the globe, coming back to us, 
and we are losing it. And Gandhi said, Gandhian spirit in journalism. And we killed Gandhi. And we are killing him every day. And we as journalists are also killing him every day. Especially now, the kind of journalism and the kind of challenges we are facing. It's not about just physical lynching, it's about intellectual lynching also. Each of you is targeted. If you speak the truth, you are lynched intellectually. I mean, your colleagues will lynch you intellectually. If you are a teacher, the system will lynch you intellectually. If you are intellectual, the system... I mean, how many scientists said that the earth is round and they were burnt on the stake? How many people? Shaw said that, you know, St. Jones, you know, she was burnt on the stake, you know. Shaw said, what did he say, the last lines of the play? When will this earth be ready to receive thy saints? But now the earth is ready to receive its saints. Only we are coming in its way. The earth is now one. 21st century and 22nd century, you all know better than me, you know. The mobile has made it one. The new media has made it one. It is all about you being part, part and parcel of it to your detriment or to your advantage. So the story is about you and about me and about the spirit in us and about the common bond we have. If we are not going to understand this, we will all be in a trap laid by ourselves in it. Somebody said, we are betrayed by what is false within us. No villains we need be. You don't need any villains from outside to betray you. It is your falsehood that trips you, that comes before you as a obstacle which makes you not see things to your death advantage. You start seeing enemies where there are none. Who is the enemy? The enemy is you yourself. And who is your friend? Your friend is the spirit. So do not drown your spirit in extraneous issues. Let it come out crystal clear. Let it speak out for itself. Let it guide. And you know one thing, another thing as communicators, you know, one of the biggest, biggest assets you have, you know, and I mean one of the biggest assets you all have, you are born with it, but we have lost it. We lose it. We are born with it, but we should cultivate it. Gandhi cultivated it to such an extent that he had full advantage. We had the full advantage. We got a free nation out of it. Without bloodshed. There have been nations with so much of bloodshed. We got a nation without bloodshed because of this advantage. And what was this advantage? This advantage was that, you know, he was aware of the spirit inside him and the connection of that spirit with all the spirits around, you know, and all being part of one spirit. So this oneness of us, if he could, you see, what I said that, you know, if you look into each other's eyes, and if you look into each other's eyes with clarity of thought, purpose, intent, you will be able to look into the heart of the other person, and the other person will listen to you, will help you, will be close to you because he, she will be able to see the light of your heart. When the two spirits connect with one another, they come in the best form, they come in the best relationship, which is their organic relationship, which is our true self. When we see our true self, when we remove the mirrors between them, between the barriers between them, we become one and we can reach out and we can get things done for the betterment of all of us. This is part of nature. Look at the ants. The ants, you know, they walk in a line. They are a community that is always helping one another. They have no Hindus and Muslims, you know. They have no partitions, you know, but they are all in solidarity because they are moving in one spirit, one purpose, health, compassion, uh, uh, emotional integration. 
and emotional education that they have here. So we are losing it. We should not lose it because that is our biggest strength. When you hold to that, in that is your key to success, in that is your true discovery, in that is there is participation, there is strength, there is conservation, in that you have all the solutions. You all get together and find solutions for the problem. That is why we were there as a race. That is why we got to the epitome of the evolutionary ladder. Because we were always thinking about how to do things better together. But when we started doing things, undoing things against one another, we started climbing down. And we became what the Quran says, Asfala Sasuli, worst of the creation. Worst of the creation. Because you see, we became, we became engines and forces of destruction. And to come back to our epitome is just to immerse in ourselves, immersive reality, IR. And with that come, it is an open question and an open challenge to us, have you not immersed in your reality? Or you are again being just controlled by a technological deterministic product, which is now again going to make you haywire, you know, run into difficulties. But if you immerse yourself into your own reality, then you know, without that IR, without that VR, you would be able to communicate into a world, into an empathy, into an empathetic understanding, get all your solutions, get all your problems solved the best way. It will be a win-win situation. It will make your life very easy. Try to practice it. It's something that you practice in every day, every second. Just change your attitude, discover yourself, discover that self in the other person and make life easy and happy and smile for you. And if that becomes your purpose as communicator, as guided, that is your communication message. Not only you will become a Gandhi, but you will become yourself. What? There is a poem by Rajat Kipling, if, if you look it up, you know, the last line says, if you can be a man, my son, Yours will be the earth. So if you can become a woman, my daughter, yours will be the earth. I mean, that is, you see, it is so simple. Let's not make it difficult. Let us practice it. In. And to practice, because this is the truth of communication. This is the relationship that we have with one another. This is the simplest, simplifying the complexity of life which we have actually woven upon ourselves. Life is very simple, very organic. That is why Gandhiji used to talk about so many simple models, simple mud therapy, water therapy, I mean food habits, and clothing, simple living, you know. But it was living, it was not dying. Today we are dying by our civilization and by our mad rush, you know. If we want to live, you will have to discover yourself, you will have to find partners in that. And to find partners, the question will come of communication and of a society change. So mass communication, as mass communicators, you become important. If you use all your skills and all your education for mass communication, for improving the quality of the spirit in yourself, you will be guided to the best of results. Otherwise, you will always be denying yourself. I mean, Gita said there is the theory of karma, but in the Quran it is said that, you know, when you do any injustice to the other person, you are doing injustice onto your soul, onto yourself. You don't slap another person, you slap yourself. You don't curse another person, you curse yourself. You don't hurt another person, you hurt yourself. You don't divide, you divide yourself. So this art of compassion, art of living is not just, it is something that it is spirit in you that needs to be awakened, that needs to be understood, that needs to be utilized as a bridge. Unless we walk this walk, unless we cross this bridge, 
we will not reach to the promised land. The promised land is Puran Swaraj which awaits in terms of Mahatma Gandhi. It is the state which our constitution talks about. It is the promise of the 21st, 22nd century. It is about you and your life, you know, being happy through your mobile network, through the world being one, you know. If you want it to be happy world, where is the way, the time for being lost in cobwebs of hatred and denial of your reality? So, how are you going to use all this, you know, as a, as a mass media person, as a mass media practitioner? is a challenge and of course the there is always the Lakshman Rekha the Lakshman Rekha would be that you know let me not harm myself if I am not going to harm myself my but what is myself myself is my spirit I mean if I am sitting at the feet of my parents I am making my spirit rich in but if I am trampling on their rights and my duty I am making myself poor. I am breaking myself. If I am respecting my teacher, I am respecting myself. I am respecting myself. And if I am respecting myself, then I am actually promoting the best what is there in me. Similarly, so society writes, you know. So, what are the motives of a journalist, you know? I mean, you all know, I mean, money can't be our motive, you know. Money can never be a motive of anybody in life. What could be your motive is your true self, the betterment of your true self. It may require no money, it may require very little money, and it may require all the money. But if your motive is your true self, then you would know the best way to get the best money and to keep yourself un- Tainted, you know. That is, and when the purpose is yourself, then you would not sell yourself. People say that you know we are part of a, a journalistic order in which we are we have, we have been bought by a corporation or a, a, a view a proprietorship. So we are sold. You know we have to say what we have to say. No, you don't have to say. You just all everybody has to say what their self is talking about, what their rights are talking about. You know. What their truth is there? What is their inner self? What is their inner uh, inner consciousness? What is the the what is the beauty of discovering the other? When especially you know as communicators you must discover the othering. You know that othering is nothing but a false distortion of yourself. We come to hate certain pictures. We come to like certain pictures. But the best picture you have to like is your true self. And when you see your true self, it will be the same. That is your enemy's true self. Because there were no enemies, you know, when the spirit entered each of us. And that is what our sages tell us. That is what our all divine messages tell us. We are the same spirit. You know, because there couldn't be anything else. You know. First was the spirit. And then came the diversification of the spirit like a tree and its trunk and roots you know, and then the fruits come out of it. So if you learn, the small test is learn and to love your enemy. And the first thing you see and you say, oh, this is my enemy. See the spirit in that and in yourself. You will find the same blood, the same copper cells, the same biology, the same every, the same species, you know. But what is there? And the power of love. And then I said that, you know, when you look into yourself, strengthen your spirit, then if that spirit sees you, your spirit, it will come in a friendly mode. The best of your, the worst of your enemies will become your best friends. The best partnership will be forged out of it. It has always happened that way, you know. With all the awakened spirits. I mean, that was of course the message of I. I mean, we know that's the message of Gita also. Because, I mean, what? It was n- never the othering, you know. Today we are finding, you know, in, in Lord Krishna, Lord Rama, you know, examples of othering, you know. 
No, but the othering was of the hatred for the evil that is in us, you know. It was their own brothers that they were saying that, you know, no, it is the dharma, the dharma of the spirit inside that has to be established and to establish it, you have to overcome your own hatred. Yoga, yoga today is used you know, as a power of, of, of so many things, you know, but what it is, it is about controlling yourself, controlling your anger, controlling your passion, controlling your dislikes. I mean, so that was the yoga that gave Gandhiji all the strength, you know. Another very important part of Gandhiji's message as journalist is his Shakti and peace. And that was all strengthened by his roots in Yoga and Gita. Shakti and peace, if you look at the two words, that is his journalistic message. And he said that, you know, what is Shakti? Shakti, he said, the strength that I get to stop hating my enemy, to stop hurting my enemy, to stop seeking revenge, to stop seeking dishonest ways of power, to stop hurting others, I seek that strength from God. That is what is Shakti. Shakti, today we see Shakti in a Hitlerian concept. We try to define religion as the opium of the masses. There will be this religion and the opium of like an opium, you know, you give them, they become drug addicts and then they start swooning around and into violent structures. And so, for him, Shakti was that concept of God which gave you the strength to do right when everything is wrong. The message of Gita. But it was Shakti from God and non-violence, Ahimsa. Ahimsa, peace. And the, uh, beautifully he could see the unity in it. Because that exact meaning of Islam. Islam is just Shakti and peace. So, Gandhian journalism and if you say Islam journalism, absolutely the same by its origins, ethics and power structure. Because Islam means what? Surrender to God, to a positivity, to stop hating others, to stop doing wrong, to stop, your, you have surrendered your identity to the inner identity and to the power and it means peace also. And that is why Gandhiji said, his Ram Rajya is the Ram Rajya or Khalafat, Khalafat was the rule of Khalifa Abu Bakr and Khalifa Umar. They were the two principal followers of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And especially your university has a very intrinsic relationship with that because it was built by the Usmani Nizams. You know. And Usmani Nizams were the descendants of Abu Bakr whom Gandhiji said that, you know, my Ram Rajya is the Khilafat of Abu Bakr, is the rule of Abu Bakr. How he was, because in his rule what used to happen was that, you know, the most poor person was taken care of and the most rich was punished equally like the poor was punished. And he used to say, you know, that, you know, bury me in a tattered cloth. Because if you bury me in a new cloth, that cloth can be used for someone who is in need. And Umar used to say that, you know, if he was walking somewhere, halfway he would make his uh, attendant sit on the camel. And halfway he would sit on the camel. Because he got tired, he was old. You know. So that kind of rulers, that kind of rule was his Ram Raja, was his Khilafat of Umar and Abu Bakr was his power structure, was his power relationship, was his Shakti journalism and otherwise it was peace, it was the surrender. You see, and, and why he says that? Why he says I am talking about Shakti journalism? Because he says you will need the Shakti. It is not the Shakti that comes from, you know, Ahankar, Hitler, my seeing others, 
demonizing others, othering, trying to find people, pinpoint and then sit and run. No, he said my strength comes from not attacking, not being violent, being brotherly, sisterly with all because for that I need courage, for that I need to control myself. But that power comes from God. It comes from Dhyana, from Zen. If you say Quran says Zikr, if you see the Sufis have a Tasbi, you know, but they are doing Zikr, you know, they are doing Zikr, 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 Dhyana, Dhyana. That power comes from there. Then you said that the Samurai says that, you know, he goes to that sage and he says, what is heaven and what is hell? And so he says, he doesn't answer, he takes out a sword and he says, this is hell. And when he goes before him in submission, he says, this is heaven. You see, the power is coming from Dhyana. And power is coming from God. And if we say we are atheists, we don't believe in God, then also the power will come from right action. Like the Quran says that, you know, God lifts up good words and right action. Similarly, I am just a concept, you know, so right action and atheist would say my right actions uphold me. Right actions power from right action. Right actions will give you the power. And then the right actions will teach you not to hit wrong, not to go wrong, not to do wrong, the three monkeys of Gandhi ji. You see power. Shakti, but you must realize today Shakti is being so much demonized. Shakti, Shakti, Shakti means something. No, Shakti means that you have left power for submitting before a big power. You have taken a vow, the vow of a bhikshu, the vow of a Buddha, the vow of a sannyasi. But sannyasi is now, I wouldn't say, you know, sannyasi is also. Sadhus and sadhvis would be ones who are talking about love and harmony. Who would be talking about sadbhav. Who would be living sadbhav. Living examples of compassion. Compassion, compassion, compassion. Compassion. Like if a practicing, practicing example, you know, there are organizations which are working for compassion. And there would be, you know, and there are people you know, who are still in within us, you know who are connecting people all together, you know. So, we must find out compassionate living ways, you know. Compassionate pot, uh, patterns of living. Compassionate, you must promote those. As a duty of journalists is to com promote compassion. Gandhian view of world order is through compassion. Because compassion makes us discover ourselves, makes it, gives us the best of the environment where ourselves our true spirit can shine. Tam soma jyotir gamaya. Allah. Nur samavati valar where we can discover, see. I mean if you, if you have, if you want to see some beautiful thing, you know, you will have to close yourself or focus on that thing. What Iqbal says that, you know, see by closing your eyes. Learn to see by closing your eyes. It's just an exercise if you do that. That is what meditation is. That is what dhyana is. If you close your eyes and see, you will be able to see, then you will be able to realize that, you know, what is happening around us. And all these are patterns of practices, you know, which you should inculcate, which you should instill. When you have a communicatory model, you should see that the noise and the signal are not competing. The noise is reduced and the signal is amplified. And always remember that the signal should be your spirit from your life to your death because there will be no death if you have amplified your signal of your spirit. The spirit will take you to levels. That is what it said that you know we are part of consciousness. The consciousness grows and grows and grows. Even now you know Again, Marshall Nucleon said, Marshall McLuhan also said that it's a neural world order. So, I mean, even if, if, if according to the neural energies also you become part of a, new, a, a legacy of neural construction, you, know, you are carried away into new waves of construction. So, from this spirit to the last of the spirit, 
you will never die if you have walked the path with your spirit and if you have killed your spirit then you will never live then every day of your coming into a class and going out is of not living actually it's dying you may have a communication model but it will be killing you every day and you will be killing others around you because you have lost the inner peace that is what gandhi said that you know spirit gandhi and spirit in journalism and contemporary challenges contemporary challenges i said are various you all are aware of them you know what they are at the moment you know from hegemonistic world design to corporatization to you know to our othering to our seeing you know enemies everywhere you know to our hurting everywhere to our pillaging destructions and our divisions you know these are all our challenges to our losing our way in marketization in lack of family values in lack of ethics in breakdown of family system in our disobedience to our parents in our fights with our brothers and sisters with our teachers with our parents with our elders you know but coming back to all of them you will have to pick all this up as as a pathway of understanding i mean if you pick it up it is to your benefit if you lose you will lose sight of your best thing which you have today the best thing you have is not your costly mobile or the costly shoe that you are wearing or the costly dress or the bag that you carry today or the camera that you have or the editing suite that you want tomorrow it is the spirit in you learn to value that spirit learn to use the power of that spirit as i said in the four alliances you know spiritual leaf frogging spiritual bridges that you make is the power of your spirit should be used and the power of your spirit will lead you on will egg you on we have an organize have, two of these gentlemen are here they are working for an organization compassion for humanity interact with them see with them how they are also treading a path which is difficult is it trying to bring all the people together i mean they go and participate in the kumbh they go up to the uh, what you the, the amarnath yatra they go into masjids and mandirs they go into all kinds of situations lead with people come together be together live together so that he will never die but he will always live together in a happy world here and in the hereafter it awakens our spirit So, I mean, they are a good tribute to Gandhi and thought. You know, I met them, and so they said that you know they heard about my lecture. They said we like to join, so they are here, two of them. You can interact with them. You can think about them, share it with your friends, create your own organizations like this. You know, life is very small, very little. Each of you will be mass communicator. If you can use this message or adapt it according to your own, create such structures, such pathways. You know, such podcasts. that broadcast that video cast you know use them use these linkages and bridges you know make such shorts you know every day if you do a good deed you know for you a good deed would be put a short message in form for the new media you know put it across you know which it talks about connecting awakening your spirit you know i have always tried to do it you know you will be the best beneficiary because you will have a robust spirit but as gandhi ji said that you know i'll read out that piece the passage you know i had met got many things but uh what gandhi ji why did he said that you know how he as a journalist how difficult it was to be true to my faith i may not write in anger or malice i and when he say i may is because in old english you know i may meant i will never to be true to my so i'll i'll change it into new english you know okay so to be true to my faith i will never write in anger or malice i will never write ideal now remember right we are always writing in malice and anger as journalists you know we are always oh, 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 oh i am an investigative crew i know this man is dirty this man is this no don't write in malice and anger because he also has a spirit to work try to approach it to the best of best of objectivity the best of commitments you know try to pinpoint errors errors in the system you know so that he can you can she can improve you know we have to improve the system we don't have to find and identify blame and make scapegoats you know 
and journalists never make lame scape ghosts find solutions you know, correct systems you know. but if you make scape ghosts and blame you will only be creating vengeance revenge systems will collapse you know. so dev gandhi ji said to be true to my faith i may not write i may never write in anger or malice i may not write ideally remember that very important i will never write ideally ideally means that you know there is no for a journalist there is no time when he is idle i know i was just thinking so i was just writing and it caused such a fervor it has caused a nuisance it has created a pandora's box it has created a debate oh no when you are in public domain there is no ideal talk there is no ideal i mean as a journalist also you are always in public domain never talk like like again you know like in the gita uh, and in the quran it is said that you know there can't be any meeting there can't be any secret meeting or any meeting but except for the good of all humanity not for the good of muslim you can't have any secret meeting you can't have any meeting it has to be for the good of all humanity therefore any meeting has to be there similarly it says that you know there are duties of the street sadak ke adab how you walk there how you behave in a society you see these responsibilities this is for journalistic order is already there so we have to follow that gandhi ji was following to be true to my faith faith is power in god shakti i will not write in anger or malice i will not write idly i will not write merely to excite passion that is what what we are doing red journal yellow journalism to excite passion Well, my well, my ratings are going up i have today stirred a debate and the whole country is on fire wow 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 i am printing minting money he said i will never write to excite passion the only passion that i'll excite is awakening the spirit love and compassion it will flow like the ganga ganga aaye kahan se ganga jaye kahan re lehraaye pani mein jaise dhoop chhaun Okay. spirit flows eternity it flows into the ocean of eternity where the mind is without fear the spirit is and then the reader can have no will the reader can have no idea of the restraint i have to exercise week by week in the choice of topics and my vocabulary is he saying gandhi ji saying the reader will not have you do not have an idea how difficult it is for me as a journalist or me as what i write i have to weigh every word i have to weigh the consequences of every word i write and i have to the topics in which i choose it is very important agenda setting is the purpose of media but gandhi ji said that you know i i undergo so much pain to weed out ideas which may not help him ideas which may stir trouble but to promote ideas which may lead to the right thing you know semantic related semantically related thoughts is a phenomena in communication when you talk about red rag the bull comes in mind you so you see when you put one thing you put you put buddha's picture something will come to your mind there will something else will come to your mind what you are putting there you know now people say that no oh, no we have not named a community we have not named this we have not named that but when they will put some shirt they will show something and they will demonize a the thing don't do that never do that as journalists never do that think about the values and the spirit and only talk about the spirit and its betterment and the betterment of society so put a way where how you shape a news item electronically or in print how much effort should go into selecting the topics the words the commentary the pictures it is not just that it's a slip of the tongue you can't have you can't afford as a journalist a slip of the tongue and the fact it is a training for me this is a training for me it enables me to peek into myself and to make discoveries of my weaknesses now look at this he says you know all this effort that i am making into not writing bad things or disturbing things or topics or this and that 
it enables me to peek into myself. You see, because he was an awakened spirit, his spirit was alive. We have killed our spirit, so we can't peek into ourselves. We can't find light. We can't find direction. We seek direction here and there. Direction is lying within us. But we have lost it. We have lost the power. You were the most powerful thing. But you have become the most powerless thing. Because you have lost yourself. You have lost your spirit. But if you promote your spirit like Gandhi ji had promoted, he could, it enables me to peek into myself. To look into yourself and find the answer. And to make discoveries of my weaknesses. Good, good God, how great he was. Every time the great man whom we call Mahatma was learning by looking into himself. And he was learning from his weaknesses. He had weaknesses. Weaknesses were his. Maybe I am angry today. Maybe I am trying to put this topic as a headline. Maybe I am trying to take revenge by this. Or maybe I am trying to put, uh, push this agenda. Or oh, this is my greed, you know. All those weaknesses, he was constantly, constantly learning and diminishing them. Because he was constantly and constantly improving his inner self and strength. His spirit was day by day becoming stronger and stronger and it was always able to guide him and lead him. It enables me to peek into myself and to make discoveries of my weaknesses. Often my vanity dictates a small expression or my anger a harsh adjective. He said, Gandhiji is saying this. Often sometimes what happens, my ego, I mean there were so many things that you know, people were saying this and that about him or others, true or bad. So he, vanity, self-expression said, I would like to say this in reply or my anger or an harsh adjective. No, he would not. He would restrain himself. By looking inside, he could find, he could the power to restrain himself. And he could find the answer and he could discover how, how wrong he was and he would make himself more strong and the spirit more strong. It is a terrible ordeal but a fine exercise to remove these weeds. Such a beautiful thing. If this could be your eternal clothes also and your thing, you know, the power to be, the power to see inside. It is a terrible ordeal because he was suffering. But in that suffering like Buddha, like Krishna and Arjuna on the Ras, you know, like Muhammad in the cave when the Quran came on him. Terrible ordeal. Terrible, why? Because, because you see, because you see, to remove, you know, ants which are eating you away. When you are scrubbing your, your dirt from your body, terrible dirt has got on your body and your soul is blackened. To remove it requires effort, effort, effort. It is a terrible ordeal, but a fine exercise. Fine exercise because you are, you are living. From dying, you are becoming alive. From being poor, you are becoming richest. From being destroyed, you are being constructed. So you are becoming yourself as your mother gave birth to you. As the superior being brought you, in the spirit into you, you are realizing that potential. So it is a terrible ordeal, but a fine exercise to remove these weeds. You are removing these weeds which are eating away all the nutrients that the flowers of life, that the gift of wisdom, that the gift your mother gave you and the gift that God gave you to bloom into a wonderful tree to bear the best of fruits that may be eaten away by the weeds that you have planted on yourself. So remove them and rise above to the occasion and rise to the beauty and the inner strength that your soul has and discover the partnership that life and the Shakti and the power of the Almighty has blessed you with and so that you can in compassion and peace, in silm and in submission to reality, find oneself and for each other a joyous life and a wonderful future. Thank you so much.